Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. So today I thought I would talk about the amount of money that I spent on books in 2020. No, 2021. <laughs> So I did a video like this last year where I looked at the amount of money I've spent on books like ever. I thought it would just be fun to like keep a record of this for the future just because it's kind of interesting to look at these trends and things like that. And also I like budget and I like track all my spending and things like that so it's not hard for me to pay attention to all these numbers but I also just think it's you know kind of interesting to see where people fall on the spectrum. I'm not here to shame people for how much they do or don't spend on books. You know I love using my library but I also enjoy buying books obviously. Um, I enjoy supporting local independent bookstores. I have a disposable income so I'm happy to use that or at least some of that towards buying books. But I also thought this would be interesting because for those of you who are aware I'm doing kind of like a no buy year this year. I'll have a link up in the cards to my video talking about that and so I thought it would just be interesting to keep the trend going so that way like next Next year, I mean, I don't know how the no buy year is going to go in general. If I do end up buying books over the course of the year for whatever reason, it would be interesting to just see the trends over the course of a few years. Or maybe like after doing the no buy year, maybe my spending will change in the future. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I thought I would just share with you guys some numbers. So I thought I would start off by talking about some of the reoccurring expenses that have happened in terms of books. So for part of the year, I had a Scripps subscription. And for part of the year, I had a Libro FM subscription. I canceled it part of the way through the year because I wasn't like listening to audiobooks enough to justify the expense after a certain amount of time. So I currently don't have subscriptions to either of those. So for Scribd, I had a subscription for about eight months. And at $9.99, that came out to $79.92 spent there. And then for Libro FM, I had a subscription for about the same amount of time, but I also bought a few additional credits at the beginning of the year because I was reading nonfiction books for the book two prize. And in order to make sure that I like actually got through all six of those books, I bought a couple of audiobooks of the books in my round and so I had a couple of like extra like credits I had purchased. I don't know if it was extra credits or if I had just purchased the books through Libra from whatever it was there were a handful of extra expenses and so in total I spent $98.10 at Libra FM. And then the next thing I sort of wanted to categorize as one big group is all of the purchases or the total amount that I spent at Barnes & Noble last year. Um, Barnes & Noble, in case you aren't aware, is a US-based chain. And so I do go shopping there quite a bit. And so the total that I spent at Barnes & Noble last year was $156.79, which honestly, I don't think is that bad. Like. I remember at the beginning of the year I had gone like a couple of times to buy a book here and there. Honestly I'm happy with like all of those purchases because I don't really go shopping at Barnes & Noble a lot and a lot of times when I do is because I'm picking up something I already read um, or it's a book that I'm really excited about things like that. So yeah not too bad honestly in my opinion but also at the same time like those purchases add up. And then outside of that there were a handful of sort of like independent bookstore or independent comic book related purchases that I made over the course of the year. So in January I bought a copy of Jane Harper's new book and that I purchased from an independent bookstore that's based in Chicago called Volumes and that was the only like purchase I made from them this year but they also had a GoFundMe this year. They couldn't afford the rent anymore on one of their locations and so they started a GoFundMe page and I donated actually a hundred dollars to that. So that actually makes up like a pretty decent chunk of like my total that I spent this year but in my opinion it's worth it. I like what they do. I've always enjoyed their bookstore and I'm hoping that they'll open up a new physical location later this year. In July I went to an independent comic book store in Chicago as well and that one is called Alley Cat Comics. I love that comic book store so much. It's one of my favorites. And there I spent $21.52. Um, I bought a single issue comic as well as a trade comic and I have not read either but that's fine. But yeah that was actually the only comic book store purchase that well actually well I should say the only Chicago comic book store purchase I made this year which I thought was really interesting because I feel like I have finally like reined in my comic purchasing to mainly get stuff from the library and then get my favorite things from actual comic book stores when I get the chance. So that was basically all of the book spending that I did in the first half of the year and I was doing really really well. I wasn't buying a whole lot of books uh, but then I booked a trip to Portland, Oregon 
and your girl spent a lot of money. In case you aren't aware, definitely North America's largest independent bookstore, uh, definitely one of the world's largest independent bookstores, is located in Portland, Oregon, named Powell's. And I knew going to Portland, I would be buying a lot of books. I went to Powell's multiple days, and yeah, I came home, I think, with like 15 books, which was basically just as much as I could possibly fit in my suitcase. I refused to bring like extra luggage <laughs> for books. Like that was sort of me like putting a limit on myself, but I still pushed it. I had like a backpack and my luggage and it was crammed. So in total, I spent $266.70, which honestly I don't think is that bad, but <laughs> considering the number of books I bought, you know, I bought a lot. Um, we also went to a comic book store while we were there as well. And so there I spent $33.98. I actually bought volume two of Check, Please, which I still have yet to read at that comic book store. So like that's a purchase where I'm like, yeah, I know I'm going to love this uh, because I loved volume one so much. And so I had no problems like purchasing that. Not a big deal for me at all. Also, in case you are interested in seeing like all of the books I bought at Powell's or in Portland in general, I posted a picture of it on my Instagram, so you can check that out in case you're interested. And also, I'm on Instagram, so feel free to give me a follow if you'd like. And then something that's like a little bit unusual for me, but not like crazy unusual, is I bought an ebook from Amazon. Now, I have a Kindle, but I try really hard to not spend any money at Amazon or Amazon related organizations. But I was traveling to Portland and I really wanted to read this one specific book, but I didn't want to pack that book because I knew I was going to be coming home with a lot of books. And so I decided to just buy an ebook copy of that book. And so I spent $10.99 in Amazon buying an ebook copy of A Girl in Three Parts, which again, I'm glad that I did because I read the ebook almost entirely on the plane. It was like the perfect book for that plane ride length and things like that. Was it the best use of my money? Some people might say no, but for me it was. And then because I, you know, went to Powell's and bought all of these books, I was like, okay, I'm not going to really buy books for the rest of the year. However, I did have like two more trips. One was to Nashville, Tennessee. And so I went to Parnassus Books because Ann Patchett owns it. And of course, and the last time I was in Nashville, I actually didn't get a chance to go to Parnassus. So that was always a regret of mine. So I ended up going to Nashville again last year and went to Parnassus and I spent $37.13 there. I ended up purchasing two books, one of which was Black Sun, which I had already read and so I just wanted a physical copy of. Specifically, I saw that it was out in paperback and I was waiting for the paperback edition, so bought that. And then I also bought a copy of When the Reckoning Comes, which I had been hearing a lot of really good things about and I read again earlier this year. Really enjoyed it myself. And then finally, I went to Spring Green, Wisconsin. I did a whole vlog about that trip and I ended up going to Arcadia Books there which is like you know just a really cute independent bookstore in this really tiny town. It was so adorable and so the grand total that I spent there was $70.52 and I was fine with it because I was traveling to a new place and it was also my birthday. So yeah. <laughs> so in total the amount of money that I spent on books which before I say it, let's just think about like when I break up all of my individual purchases, I'm like, oh, I didn't really spend that much on books and I didn't really acquire that much books, which like relatively speaking, mostly true. But the grand total was $927.88. And when you see that grand total, that's a lot of money. Now, I've always said that the amount of money that I spend on books. I want to be either equal to or less than the amount of money I made on YouTube. And so, especially like once I started like making a decent amount of money on YouTube. And so that is true, I did do that. And so that's part of the reason why I feel okay with that amount, even though it is a very large amount. And maybe like some of you are watching this and you're like, that's not even that much money. I spend so much more than that, which yeah, but like, you know, a thousand dollars is not nothing to sneeze at, especially considering that in, 2020 I spent $615 on books and like again it's all relative because in 2020 I didn't go out you know I didn't go traveling or anything like that so I didn't spend as much money on books but still like that's a decent amount of money and so that's part of the reason why I'm doing a no buy this year. The thing I miss the most in terms of like buying books is not so much like the buying of books but it's that I really enjoy supporting local independent bookstores and so like one of my rules with my no buy is that if I travel I'm gonna 
allow myself to go and buy books. But also, like, I went to an independent bookstore a few weeks ago, and I convinced my partner to buy me a book there because they're a Black-owned bookstore, and I haven't been to their new location. It's called Semicolon here in Chicago. I love what they're doing, and I just wanted to support them. And so my partner agreed to buy me a book as a gift, and very grateful for him. But yeah, I thought it would just be interesting, again, to just see sort of how that turned out in terms of the amount of money spent, and especially because... I probably will buy some books at some point this year because I probably will travel somewhere. But I also just think it's interesting to see sort of like how my spending may or may not change over the years, where I choose to put my book money, um, where I don't and things along those lines and sort of maybe how priorities change. Like if I end up getting really into audiobook listening again, um, I might pick up, pick up a Scribd subscription or a Libro FM subscription. But for now, I feel like using my library apps have been enough for me since I don't listen to a lot of audiobooks. So yeah, I don't know. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. I think it's interesting to see sort of how people spend their money in general, but also like in the booktube sphere, how people spend their money on books. I think it would be interesting if more people did stuff like this, but I also realize like it's very vulnerable to share money related information. Also, people might not track and stuff like this as closely, but I do because I'm a big nerd. I feel like for the most part, I'm really happy with my book purchasing last year. I feel like I bought books mainly that I really enjoyed. I mean, I may not have like absolutely adored every single one of those books, but I definitely liked, if not loved, the vast majority of the books. There were only a couple of duds in there. I also think I'm becoming a little bit more judicious in terms of like waiting until I hear a little bit about a book before I buy a copy of it or reading a book from the library and then buying it later. Like even when I went to Portland, I think half of the books that I bought when I was in Portland were books that I had already read that I just found copies of, things like that. So yeah, I definitely feel like nothing that I spent on books was a waste last year, which again, people may disagree with that sentiment. I like keeping books and I am happy to support the book industry and support authors and things like that in that way because I have the financial means to do so. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions about any of the stuff I talked about here today. I'm not afraid to like talk about money or anything along those lines, so I have no problems if you have questions for me about any of this stuff. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.